Okay, children, you are now dismissed um, to head to junior church. In your Bibles, you can turn to the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 1. Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 1. Oh, yeah, and by the way, Feliz Cinco de Mayo for you. Mark chapter 1, verse 35 to 39. Mark chapter 1, 35 to 39. In the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. Simon and his companions searched for him. They found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. He said to them, Let us go somewhere else to the towns nearby so that I may preach there also, for that is what I came for. And he went into the synagogues throughout all Galilee, preaching and casting out demons. It's very interesting to me to read that Jesus got up early in the morning, went to a secluded place, a place by himself, um, that quiet place, to spend time with his heavenly father, to spend time in prayer. Now, he's our example, right? We see an example of this. Now, we could assume that since he is God in the flesh, that he wouldn't have to do this, that he would just have this automatic connection um, as far as his relationship with his heavenly father. But For whatever reason, maybe as far as because he was completely human and completely God, that that completely human part of him, he needed to have that time to get away, to get away from everybody else and spend that time with his heavenly father. You'll notice also that he gave very clear direction of what they were going to do after that time of prayer. And also, um, you know, there was a lot of clamoring around Jesus. There were a lot of people that wanted to be with him. They, you know, he'd already done some miracles, and so obviously people wanted to see more of that. But in the midst of all that, he just stopped, got away from everybody else, and then he spent that time in prayer. Paul also knew that spending time in prayer was very important, spending that time with God. You know, as you read through his letters, you could catch a glimpse of that, um, usually at the beginning of most of the letters that are, are personal. There's some letters that, that are just kind of like written maybe to a, a large group or groups, and so there's not a lot of personal um, uh, statements in it at the beginning. But when, it, when he writes it to a group that he seems to know who they are and they have a relationship together, you see this idea about how important prayer is, how important spending time with God is with Paul. When he wrote 1 Corinthians, he said, I thank my God always concerning you. When he wrote Philippians, he said, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you. When he wrote Colossians, he said, praying always for you. So you get the point. Paul prayed a lot. So he used that word always several times uh, at the beginning of several of his letters when he was writing to the churches. So spending time with God was very important to Paul. So we have to ask ourselves that question today. What's important for us? I mean, think about it. We have our life. We have our commitments, our spending, our time, our responses. All these things are going to really show us what's really important for us. And I hope what is important to you is to honor God in everything. I mean, think about that statement to honor God in every part of your life. I hope that that's important for you. In fact, I want to challenge you today to make that something that's very important to you. Remember, we used a little phrase from Scripture last week, and I want to just look at the first part of it. We looked at the second part of it last week, but the first part of that phrase, something that Paul said was, to live is Christ. Now, we we know what he goes on to say, but let's just focus on that first part. To live is Christ. Christ. Is your life described in this way? That as you look at your life, you examine what you do and what's important to you and your priorities and all this that's going on, would you describe your life as to live is Christ? I think we're tempted for it to be for other things. To live is for myself. To live is for my family. To live is for my job. To live is for my hobbies. Whatever it is, we might fill in the blank with that. And our culture bombards us with 
false information about what a fulfilled life is all about, what it looks like. But really, if you start going down that path to try what the world is telling you, or what our culture is telling you is a fulfilled life, um, you're going to find that it doesn't bring fulfillment. So to live a life of honoring God, to live a life of, for me, to live is Christ, I want to challenge you with one of the things that you need in that, and that is to spend time with God. Make that a priority. Make that a habit in your life. Now, you're going to live for something, or you're going to live for someone. You're going to try to honor something, or you're going to try to honor someone. But if, as you look at the priorities of your life, we need to build those priorities based on what is truly important to us, because we do already. Whatever our priorities are, we have said somehow, maybe subconsciously, we have said this is what's important. These are the most important things of my life. So we looked at some challenges uh, the last few weeks. The challenge of don't fear the future. Or the challenge of don't let your past paralyze you. Or the challenge about don't be stressed about your safety. The only way that works, that we're able to do those things, is... And the only way we can accomplish those goals that, of those challenges that I've already given you is by honoring God in every part of your life. Because once you've done that, you're going to make sure everything else is going to fall in place and then there's going to be no fear and, there's, and the regret we know is, is healed and forgiven and, and the issue of safety, we don't have to worry about that. All those things that um, can, can um, overwhelm us, they don't overwhelm us when we recognize the importance and start living this life of honoring God. So I want you to, to um, maybe think about this, maybe even write yourself a note and just place it in different places and, and at whatever activity you're involved in, whatever relationship you're spending time with, you have to ask, is this honoring God? Am I honoring God now? Just asking that question. Can you say that about every part of your life? Just as you go through this week, just start evaluating and thinking and asking, am I honoring God this way? Am I honoring God with my time here, my energy here, my money here? Am I honoring God? To live is Christ. And so today's challenge is to honor God in everything that you do. And the way to do that, one way to do that, is to spend time with God. And today, I want to show you how you can do that. Now, there are several ways in our life to spend time with God. And we really need all of them in our life. And so I want to just go through this list of some of the things that we can do, ways that we spend our time, that we spend that time with God. First of all, we have quiet time. We need to spend that quiet time with God. Kind of like Jesus, early in the morning, away from everybody else, he went off to pray. This is designated, unhurried, uninterrupted time with God. And through this time, you're probably going to be reading your Bible and praying. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Your quiet time is your growth time. It's your nourishment time. Uh, you know, we know that we need proper nourishment um, in our bodies. And we usually... Um, we spend that time to make sure that we eat, right? We, we don't miss too many meals. We know that, that you know, our body's telling us, I need some food, I need some nourishment. And so we, we make sure we spend that time to, to, to take care of that, that situation. We take care of, of nourishing our physical bodies. Now maybe, maybe your um, hunger pains, pains spiritually aren't quite so loud. Maybe they're not so involved in your life, but, but we will have them spiritually if we are not nourishing our spiritual life, if we're not nourishing our soul. And so we need a quiet time. That helps us in that nourishment. It's a nourishment time. The quiet time is also your time with Jesus. It's that time to build that relationship with him. And, you know, we talk about how Christianity is about a relationship, right? A relationship with Christ. Well, if, if it is, then we need to make sure that we are spending time, valuable time, in our relationship with Jesus. So you can examine that time. I mean, you think about it. Think of the relationships in your life that you say are very important. 
And unless there's some circumstances that keep you from spending time with that person, are you actually spending time with those people in your life that you say are very important to you? Now, if you're saying they're important to you, but you're not spending time and you could spend time with them, maybe they're not as important as you're saying. Okay? And so as we think about our relationship with God, to say that God is important to us, to say our relationship with Jesus is vital for us, but then not to spend time with him really might be saying something else. And so we need to look at that because your quiet time is your time with Jesus. It's that time to build that relationship, and that's what that quiet time does. So quiet time, that's one of those times that you spend with God. Another time is spontaneous time. Spontaneous time. It's a time of crisis. It's a time of decision. It's that, that time when um, there's some sort of need and you're going to bring your request to God. Maybe something goes wrong in your life and you, you, you know, we know that what we do is we, we pray. That's that spontaneous time. The problem is, for some, that's the only time that they call out to God. That's the only time that they turn to God during that spontaneous time. It's important. We need to do it during that time, but that can't be the only time um, for us in our relationship with God. Spontaneous time is also those times when others come to you for prayer. They have a situation. Somebody tells you of that trial or that crisis in their life. Stop and pray. That's that spontaneous time that you're going to spend with the Lord. And when you tell people that you're going to pray for them, then pray. If you've, if you've said it over the phone, maybe you just pray over the phone. Maybe you hang up the phone, pray immediately. Don't just think you're going to remember that, but use that spontaneous time as a time um, to be with the Lord. Uh, we have a prayer option on our website, and people, people that we don't even know click on that um, prayer option and they send us prayers and I receive those. Like, Dino, do you still receive those prayers? And so uh, we receive those prayers and we take that time and we stop and we pray for them. I get an email from Stephen K. Carpenter. They set up this thing with um, um, every day of the month they have a prayer partner and it's on the exact same day of the month I'll get an email from them and they'll ask me or they'll ask me to pray about some of the needs that they have. And so I know that as it's getting to that day of the month, that, that all of a sudden that, that email is going to show up. I read that email and I take that time, spontaneous time. I take it right then and I pray. Now, there might be some other times I'm going to add that to quiet time, add that to other prayer times. But when I receive that email, that's that spontaneous time. It's that opportunity to pray. We need that. Um, uh, and also, when we think about spontaneous times, in our relationship with the Lord, it's good to just build those times where you're just talking to the Lord. It could be a little sentence here and there, situations. You're driving down the road, you're walking, you're doing something with somebody, you're ready to make a decision or go into a situation, whatever it is, you're just talking to the Lord. Just little sentence prayers. It doesn't have to be this long prayer. Um, just sentence prayers about asking God to be involved in your life and in that situ situation. So that's a time that we need in our relationship with God. There's also time spent with God as worship time. We have that worship time that we spend with God. Now that could be alone or that could be in community um, with others. Again, the focus of that community is on worship. It could be a large community, it could be a small community, a large church, a small church. It really doesn't matter, right? The size, you can go to a large church and worship the Lord. You can go to a small church and worship the Lord. Um, uh, but we have that worship time. And then also in your quiet time and other times, you have that, that time of worshiping the Lord. You receive the benefit through that. Worship time helps us recognize how powerful and awesome and majestic God is. He's not just the man upstairs. I know people use that phrase but he's not just the man upstairs. He's the creator, majestic creator of the universe. He holds everything in place. He, he, um, he um, deserves our worship. And so we want to make sure we respond to him in, uh, in, in that right way. Worship time helps us keep things in perspective. And it also shows a dependence on God and our need for God. 
And then number four, we have this other time, the community Bible study and prayer time. Community Bible study and prayer time. That's when you're doing it with others, right? You're going to spend time with God, but you're doing it with others as you're involved in um, groups of Bible study or prayer groups. Now, again, you can study the Bible by yourself, um, and, but as we study the Bible with others, we're going to learn from others. God will teach us through other people as well. You can spend time in prayer by yourself, but it's also a great blessing to be able to spend time in prayer with others and to hear their prayers and see how they're focusing on the Lord. You can be encouraged by others as they pray. We really do need each other. As the Bible says, iron sharpens iron, so we have that opportunity together to study the Bible together, to pray together. We follow God best with community. God set it up that way. As you read through the Bible, the whole idea, the, the culture of the way the Bible's written is community. I know we kind of think more individually and or more by ourselves, but and we have our alone time with God and we have all that, but we really do need our community together as part of that time that we spend with God. And it's very beneficial for us. So as you spend time with God, I want to challenge you to look at these times. Think about these opportunities in your life and to see, to ask, are they really part of my life? Not just checking off some boxes, but just to recognize that, yes, these are valuable parts of my life the opportunity that I have to spend time with God. And when you spend that time with God, basically it's going to involve three activities. They're going to look somewhat the same as we go through that, but I want to give you a little bit more detail on them. And I just want to remind, remind you of these activities, share some scriptures about them. So when you spend time with God, what are you going to do? Well, as we mentioned, number one, there's reading and study in the Bible. That's what you're going to do when you are spending time with God in your quiet time, in your community time, in your worship time, maybe even in some spontaneous time as a, a, a request comes to you, a situation comes up, you remember a scripture, um, God puts that on your heart and you open up your Bible or your phone app or whatever and you read that scripture or you share that scripture with others. Um, it's very important to have the word of God as part of our life. Building a daily habit of reading the Bible is important, but also spending that time, times in our life of studying the Bible. We need that study time. A couple scriptures that talk about the importance of the Word of God. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the Word, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. You have your salvation, now grow in it, is what what Peter is saying, and we do that by receiving the pure milk of the Word of God. Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So we grow from the Word, and it is also our guide as well. Now here's something that you can do, and you could possibly do it in your prayer time, and it's in your quiet time. It's basically combining reading and studying Scripture and prayer. Um, takes about 10 minutes. So you read a, a Bible passage. So it might be a chapter, might be a part of a chapter, whatever it is, but you, you, you have this time by yourself and you, and you read a Bible passage. Then you take five minutes in silence. Just set your phone, set a little timer, and just spend some time in silence. And as you're silently sitting there, you don't have to say anything, just quietly think back to what you just read. Just start thinking about it, okay? during that five minutes. And then after that, and it's, you know, we're not legalistic here, it's just an idea of a time. Um, then after that, you can spend another five minutes in prayer, thanking God for his word, thanking him for that particular passage, asking him how he wants you to apply that passage um, in your life. What action should you take as a result of reading that passage of scripture um, this particular time? It takes about 10 minutes. To, to do something like that. Again, that's an activity that you can make as your quiet time or add it to your quiet time. So these are just some activities. Another activity in these times that we spent is worshiping God. Now, I mentioned worshiping God, but let's focus on the actual worshiping of God. Now, again, we have our worship times. 
we have it at, at, you know, with, the, with the body of Christ. We, have it, we call it coming to church, right? These times of worship. And these times need to be a time of focusing on worship. Not just being here, not just saying I came, but it really as we come together to think, I am here to worship the Lord. I'm here to focus on God and, what, and, and give him the praise and glory. Um, he deserves that. As I mentioned, a couple of scriptures that talk about our worship time. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 21. He is the one you praise. He is your God who performed for you those great and awesome wonders you saw with your own eyes. So as, as Moses is reminding the people of what they saw God do as they're getting ready to head into the promised land, uh, there's somebody to praise. It's God. He's the one who's done these great things. And make sure that you praise him. A great passage of scripture to remind us of, of our response to God and what he's done in our life. And John chapter 4, verse 24, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. That's our response to God, is a time of worship. And as I mentioned, God deserves our worship and praise. You know, we might say, you know, you might notice somebody doing something well, and you and might praise them, might say, you did a great job patting them on the back or whatever, and we might say, well, you know, I, you know, I don't really deserve that, thank you anyway, you know, whatever, however we respond. In God's nature, who he is, since he's the majestic, awesome God, he actually deserves it. And so we, as we praise him, we're giving him what he deserves. He deserves that praise and worship that comes from us. And so that time that you are spending with God, make sure it is truly a focus on worshiping him. And the third activity, again, we've mentioned this, is praying. We need to pray. We spend time together praying. And again, we're reminded in Scripture the importance of prayer. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's a good verse to think about everything we've already talked about with these challenges, because as you bring your needs before God, and, you, and not worry about them, but bring them before God, you get that peace. So you don't have to have fear, you don't have to have regret, you don't have to have stress in life because of that peace that comes from God. But it starts as we respond to him in prayer, trusting prayer. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Prayer is one of the most personal ways that you connect with God. Because of Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross, if you follow Christ, you have the privilege of talking directly to your heavenly Father. You can ask God to meet your needs. You can share with him whatever you're feeling and even ask him to show you the best path for your life. God may respond to you through his Holy Spirit. He may reveal wisdom to you through the word of God, the Bible. And as you draw closer to God, you'll begin to feel the love and compassion that he has for all people growing inside of you, that all of a sudden you start developing that character in your life. You'll, be look, you'll begin looking for ways that you can connect with others, including how you can share with them what God has given you. That's my challenge for you today. Spend time with God. Hopefully you've learned some thoughts about spending time with God or have just been reminded about some of the truth about spending time with God. But as we finish up today, let's remember that, that phrase that, that Paul used, the beginning of that phrase, to live is Christ. To live is Christ. Does that describe your life? It describes your life if you're spending time with God. Let's pray. Lord, you have called us to um, come close to you, to follow you. And Lord, uh, as we are here today, I know that we have um, received and accepted that call, and, and we might be at different areas of this journey of, of trying to get close to you, but Lord, I, I believe that's the desire of the hearts of at least most people that are here today. And so I pray, Father, that as you um, continue to draw us closer to you, that we would, we would accept that drawing and we would do what we can do 
to, to know how to get closer to you. Help us, Father, to spend that time with you. Help us to be ready to bring our requests before you and to worship you as you deserve and, and to honor you in, in every part of our life. Father, that's my prayer for each one here today. In Jesus' name, amen. As we have our invitation song, if there's a decision you need to make for Christ, we want to give you that opportunity. Let's go ahead and stand together as we sing.